Hello, everybody. Marvin here. Just letting you know that we have a new Wednesday comic store that we have some uh, gear on. All people have been asking to us about t-shirts. We have a t-shirt on there now. Well, so you can get it on a mug. You can get it on multiple things. So visit our Twitter page at Wednesday Comics or Facebook.com slash Wednesday Comics Podcast for a link to the store. And please enjoy the show. Welcome to Wednesday Comics. Brought to you by RootsOfTheSwampThing.com and Supercon 2018, Return of the Con. Hey everyone, keep turning those pages. Welcome to Wednesday Comics. To my right, we have Salt and Pepper himself. Alex, how you doing? Hello, everyone. Push it, push it, baby. Across from me, we have Mickey Mouse himself. Garrett, how you doing? I'm doing swell. It's pretty good. The House of Mouse. And I am your host, Marvin. I am uh, Jaws himself, baby. Like my shirt? Da-da. Uh, one of my favorite movies. You good. know, the weird thing is that my shirt Da-da. is Salt and Pepper. I oh. just thought you were talking about my hair. No, Dude. your shirt. I mean, well, obviously, didn't understand I mean, that reference. hair is obvious, baby. Dude, but he wouldn't have looked up that song if it wasn't for you wearing that shirt. My hair is salt. Yeah, but he thought I was making fun of his hair. Salt oh. and pepper, because this guy is, uh, you know, 75 up top. Mr. Fantastic right here. Two face. <laughs> uh, Garrett wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt, um, and I am wearing a Josh shirt. So we're all representative things, uh, entertainment, right? I am uh, here in movie. This guy over here is a, uh, you know, a co- what do we call it? A f- company. Conglomerate. Uh, conglomerate. This guy over here is uh, condiments. This guy over here is uh, <laughs> I don't swoop, use baby. Em. I never use them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never <laughs> use condiments. You guys like salt and pepper? I like salt. I like, I like pepper more than salt. I like pepper on vegetables. Yeah. Excuse me. I was talking about the band. <laughs> Not actually salt. And, yeah. I didn't say salt and pepper. I said salt and pepper. That's how solid we are as a group. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, we are Wednesday Comics. We review podca- podcasts. We, we review, review podcasts. podcasts. Let's review ourselves. We have a good right podcast. We will review. We them. review comics, and this week we're reviewing the comics that came out 9 12 2018. That's the second Wednesday in September. Uh, halfway done with the month. Uh, we are here to talk about reviews. Going to play a little game at the end that uh, uh, is brand new. So stick around and, and listen to that. But first, we wanted to talk some brand new news that actually two days ago, right? Or yesterday? Yesterday. That hit. And well, yesterday, as a recording of this podcast, and we wanted to talk about it because it's something that is uh, keeps coming up on the show is the DC movies, right? Henry Cavill is uh, out as Superman. No more Superman. He actually did you see his Instagram post. I did see what that. What does that mean? Out. So I think that means uh, that he's sad about it. No, it's like he's kind of saying like it's not his. It's not his reason why he's leaving he's like i'm not sticking around for someone that won't stick around with me like all he's done is support dc that's what i mean like he's saying like hey i don't want to do this i'm a fan of this too obviously from the shirt and from the doll and everything but like uh, like he's just saying the fans like you know like sorry about that oh thank you you know i I think that's what i felt like right like if you guys were fans of really something like alex here if you were picked to pay play batman and then one day you can't do it anymore and you have to quit wouldn't you post something to be like, man, I'm a real big fan. Like this has been my dream, but obviously it didn't work out. Like that's what happened. Yeah, I, I mean, that that makes sense. That you'd at least want to call out to it and not be like, oh, look at me. You well, want to be like, hey, I'm sad, but you know things come up. He's got other jobs that he's already signed on to do. I don't know how many movies he signed on to be Superman for. Yeah, Gear, what was the news that came out? Why he quit? Or not. Um, well, one of the reasons is, you know, they're trying to fast track the like Batgirl, Supergirl, well, especially the Supergirl movie. So, you know, they've always been planning this Man of Steel 2 to magically happen. And it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back. And now they're trying to bring out Supergirl before they do Man of Steel 2. And you hear like, what the studio said? Uh-uh. So I don't think they understand Supergirl really at all. They said that. Uh, so he. I believe I heard from his camp that he left because they, you know, they didn't have it didn't fit into a schedule really anymore. And so, like, when them pushing the focus on the Supergirl movie, like you said, pushes back Man of Steel two again, and like, when is Justice League two going to happen? Like, all that gets pushed back because they want to fast track Supergirl and Batgirl. But also, they said they said officially that they were like, uh, he really doesn't fit the age for Superman that we need if we're going to be having Superman show up in the Supergirl movie. But isn't 
is it Cal is older? Age. He is older. That's the whole point. They're, they're trying to make them the same age in that movie. That's dumb. <laughs> the whole point was that she was older than him when they were on Krypton. Yeah. And when he came it's to Earth, been the he, thing, right? he had like his entire life, ex- not a life expectancy, but I mean, he grew up. He is like 30 years old when Kara first shows up to Earth. So that's stupid. Uh, that's what I saw from them. So it's also like very strange, like that they don't know what that character is or what that relationship is really. So like that kind of worries me. And then maybe that's another thing I want to bring up. Like this is another thing that proves restart the thing. Like it's a mess. Yeah. Now we we're talking earlier over the podcast, Ben Affleck might be out too. Like you're not going to have that Batman anymore. I did see who was it that they said they were trying to get for Batman. Um, do you remember? We talked about this earlier this week. Oh shit. I oh, Kit Harrington. Well, yeah, no, Kit that Harrington. Was like, I think that was kind of a joke, though. You think so? Yeah, I don't think you'd be a good Batman. Uh, I don't think so either. I don't know who that is. Uh, from Game of Thrones. Uh, John Snow. Oh, John Snow. John Snow. But I mean, no. like, no. Uh, there's better people. My fans died. But like, now they want to go back and do like a year one, two-ish, you know, like maybe not the origin, but right afterwards when he's first Batman. And they said, we need somebody else. Like, we can't. Uh, and also Ben's like, not really acting right now, not doing anything. So like, does he come back? Like the whole thing uh, says, reboot this thing. Like let's start over again. Maybe everything doesn't need to be a universe. How do you focus on making these great single movies, and then we do something with that? It has to be redone when Batman vs Superman came out. Yeah, that, that movie I, never should have came out. Not me trying to be a dick or mean, but that was not a good movie. The only saving part of that movie to me was Wonder Woman. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I think what we were so excited from that news that Batman and Superman were going to be in a movie together, we were like, oh, it's got to be called World's Finest. Like, it's got to be honoring the legacy. It's like, oh, here's this. Let's do, like, King Kong versus Godzilla. Batman versus Superman. Boom. Let's have a DC Silver War. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly it. I, like, heard that, and I was like, oh, no. That is so not And when they first promoted it, they were like, do you remember from Dark Knight Returns this one pivotal pivotal moment when they fight each other? We're going to, like, base the movie on that. Batman versus Superman. That's, like, their big promotion at Comic-Con was reading that. And does it kind of miss the mark, I think? Because in that story, it really isn't that they're fighting. Like, who cares? It's that Superman sold out and is now for working for the American government. Batman's trying to do what he thinks is right, and then they fight. It's a because Superman a, has to because he's like obligated. It's a conflict of interest yeah. and conflict of what they used to be, and, the, and they don't they're not those people anymore. Rather than them being brand new and trying to be both be heroes and just a misunderstanding of what's going on. So like the movie never had any weight in that way. Never had anything they meant to say, and so and it was just bloated. And they tried to do a million things with it, and then here comes Justice League, which is rushed and like a mess. Uh, mustache not even worth it now, right? Um, it is worth no, it. No, Mission no, Impossible. No, no. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Mission Impossible is amazing. But I so. mean, Justice League—they could have waited on that movie. They could have been like, "Oh, it's yeah. totally. or let him let him have the facial hair like he would have when he died. <laughs> yeah, well, and that kind of comes back with like Zack Snyder's original script. Like Joss Whedon got rid of a lot of stuff, but you know, Zack Snyder was getting very new gods with like you know, Dark Seed was supposed to be in that movie or Dark Side. Um, it's just, yeah, a lot of bad things happen to that universe. And like, you know, of course there's the saving grace of just Wonder Woman and there's potential for those heroes cast to be able to do it. But it's like, I think it's where we have to at least experience the next two to three years. You know, the sad thing about this, Henry Cavill wasn't a bad Superman. No, he was, he was great. Just in bad movies. He was given bad material. But like at the end of Justice League, I, there's this glimmer of hope or at the beginning too, like that first scene, I'm like, that guy is Superman. Yeah. And then now he doesn't get anything to work with. So like, right. Now you know, do it he's over no, again. Like he gets made fun of. It's like, not, you're right. He did do a great job as Superman. And like even Man of Steel, like I still th- thought that he was great. The, the movie had good aspects to it. Right. There were some things that again, like if there was a good sequel to that movie, then you'd be like, oh, it'd be kind of like Batman Begins is like, I love Batman Begins. But obviously, Dark Knight's like a masterpiece. Like it's really great. That could have been like the same thing. Like uh, Man of Steel, I don't think is as good as Batman Begins, but it could have been like, man, that second one is great. Like the first one builds on it, and like it's necessary. Like it, well, it could have been that movie. Oh, I see. To me, that'd be like X Men. But I mean, you're right. Batman Begins is the fine is a fine option. Well, we give a lot of pass to the X- first one, right? And the second one, you're like, this is yeah. better. I say when always. I when I watch yeah. X Two, I'm like, man, this is the best X Men movie out there. X Men One had good parts, but. It's not the masterpiece that X2 was. They should have done the Man of Steel sequel before Justice League. Like, return of Superman in that, whatever. Maybe he, you know, he'll visit Lex Luthor and then bring Brainiac in for one fucking 
time. But just think about it, right? Wonder Woman's great because it's not connected to anything else. Right. Shazam looks great. I'm mean, not sure if it is going to be great, but it's because it's not connected to anything else. And they and I heard they were going to have a Superman cameo on that movie, and they canceled it. And that pissed him off, pissed off Henry Cavill and his team more because he's like, so why am I Superman then if I can't even be in a movie with Superman in it? The whole thing's a mess. I don't understand why you don't reboot at this point. And like, well, that's why Jeff Johns left. He was like, I can't, I can't. Well, can you keep, imagine the guy loves oh. these characters, loves to write, lo- wants to create, and then he goes there and it's so stagnant. People don't understand the characters and like they're trying to do things that like don't make sense. And he's finally like, you know, go back to comics. Like that's I can do my own thing there, right? He's creating his own stories. And he's like, let me go back to the thing I love and the thing I know I have control over. And yeah, he's but, still doing TV too, which is awesome. Yeah, but I would think that he'd want to make sure he has his foot in the door for movies because all they're doing is showing these characters to not be true to what they are. Well, he's actually writing a lot of those movies. So like he went back to like, let's go back and write them so maybe he can fix them from that side and he's not no longer like in charge of like producing and like doing that. Oh, so I think, but I, I think he still has to have his foot in the door to be like, hey, you know, this is how this character would act. It's not always brooding all the time. He's Superman. He actually gets to be happy. So, I mean, there's but things you, that, if you're one person among, you know, five producers, right? And they might not listen to you. They might listen to the comic book writer. They know the people who know how to make movies. Yeah, but even the comic book writer would at least know how to make these characters seem more legit. I know, but I understand. But, but like, they you get studio don't. interference. That's like Suicide Squad. They like that trailer was really great, and they're like, "Oh, let's get these guys to film yeah, part of this movie." Right. <laughs> Horrible. Who, oh like, God. Uh, yeah, the whole thing's a mess. I don't know what you got to do with it. I hope Henry Cavill like he was great in Mission Impossible. I hope he doesn't like. He's obviously has charisma. He can stay around and do something else, um, which I hope he does. And maybe another franchise. Maybe Marvel scoops him up. He does like Captain Br- Captain Britain or something oh, like that. Do that be sick. Should be great. Uh, do something, maybe Hercules. They got a Hercules movie where he shows up in Thor, you know, as Hercules. Things, there's things he can do over there. Oh, yeah. If he wants to show up. Uh, and then guess what? If he shows up with a mustache, Marvel knows how to DH people. They can de- they can demustache him too. Hell, just let him be so with a little bit of technology. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of technology over there. A little bit more cash rolling yeah. in, a little bit more <laughs> patience to get it right. Right. Roots of the Swamp Thing.com, your definitive online source for all things Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing is heating up. A brand new series coming from Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. A brand new TV series on DC's streaming service online. Root to the Swamp Thing.com. A lot of stuff about his history, what he's doing today, and everything in between. Go to Root to the Swamp Thing.com for more information. Uh, let's get into some comic book reviews. Uh, I will talk about first Fantastic Four number two with uh, Dan Slott and Sarah Pacelli. The second issue of the Fantastic Four return. Do they return, boys? Technically, mm, yes. What do you yes. mean? But not as the full team. Not until the very last four or five pages of the book. Uh, well, they're in the whole issue. The two. Or, yeah, Fantastic Four. Reed, Sue, Alex. Uh, Franklin. Uh, Franklin. Valeria. And Valeria, or in this issue, and everybody else that was part of that kind of a uh, molecule man, everybody who at the end of Secret Wars left and was creating universes, they show up. We've seen what they've been doing. They've been just traveling universes, you know, hanging out, doing adventures. Fantastic Four set. Shit. Now, Franklin's actually making universes, yeah, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He was doing the end of Secret Wars. He was making those universes. Really? Okay. It's been so long since I've read it. I don't remember that. I think Secret Wars ends with him flinging those universes. Molecule Man's giving the energy. He's oh, you're right. He's right. somebody's destroying them. So we get open up on them traveling to planet to planet. Valeria has a boyfriend that she met on a planet to remind them of, uh, of uh, Namor. And, uh, you know, can't do that. Reed doesn't like that shit. Get him out. And um, then uh, they're traveling these galaxies, or not galaxies, but different dimensions. Um, and then here pops up a new uh, bad guy and kills Molecule Man, which is fucking crazy because that guy is like, second or third strongest person in that universe marvel universe for him to die and they even said like how did they, how did she kill uh it's crazy to me like that this character can perish like that they all handled it pretty well though yeah he got right. killed and like, like oh hey no. they killed mr molecule man oh well let's go and then valeria's like hey dad let's take the ship somewhere close to my boyfriend's planet oh I'm <laughs> she gonna stole go. the ship yeah, no, I know, but she was she was like, "Hey, we're just gonna go," and then literally crash. You know why they're kind of calm? Because Franklin is the strongest in the Marvel universe, so they got they got power. Bomb. Is he really? Yeah, he is. Mm-hmm. So, 
So like I thought Hulk was strong as there is. No, I have Franklin. Not strong with Franklin. Um so but even he said like he was trying to help them out and like struggling with it. So he's like, we need backup. And he said, uh, if Reed makes a plan, be like, you couldn't defeat us if we had our full team here. And she's and she's like, Well, bring your full team then. He's like, Okay. And she goes, What are you doing? She goes, uh, don't worry, I got a plan. Goes back. Doesn't only get the Fantastic Four. He gets everybody that's ever been associated with the Fantastic Four, who's ever been like Spider Man used to be part of the FF Future Foundation. So he shows up. Wolverine, the you know, <laughs> Wolverine shows up. Hey, a little early preview of Wolverine showing up. Uh Medusa, a lot Black of the Inhumans, Panther. a lot of a Black Panther, uh, a lot of X-Men Iceman is in it. So um, a lot of people show up to help them out, and that's you know, like you said, where the issue ends. Overall, I know I, I kind of think I know where you guys are going. Overall, what do you think about this issue? Fun? Absolutely did not enjoy it. Oh, really? I I actually really enjoyed this one. This is a way big step up for me from issue one. Way more boring than the first Holy issue. Holy shit. I thought the first issue was struggling. Really? I really love this issue. I thought I, oh. I agree. First issue was weak. This is weaker. <clears throat> really? And I'll explain why. Okay? Because I, I like to think big picture, not just by the issue, which I should be. But you have the two people that you love most in this world suffering the worst they've ever suffered in their entire lives back on Earth while you guys are doing hippity doo da through dimensions. You can't even tell them that you're alive. They're, they're sitting there thinking that you're dead, that they're never going to see you ever again, that you're never going to be a family again. They can't even go into their home without crying and Did being upset. Did you read Yes. Well, they left because it was too much of reliability for them to be on Earth. That's why they didn't go back. And that's why Franklin's like, when they're like, can you make a radio that reached Earth? And go, no, we can't do that. And they said, I know I miss them too, but we can't go back. Like, there's too but, much of a liability. But then back. when someone challenges Reed's, like, cockiness, he's like, I'll fucking bring them. Well, if it's that or dying, like, yes, bring them back. There was never a doubt of dying. He just said he wouldn't go away. What do you mean they killed Molecule Man? No, they did kill Molecule Man, but he, like, whatever the bad lady person Reaver. was like, you want to take this? If not, leave. Like, you can leave and never come back. He's no, like, I don't think so. Fantastic was, Four. She was uh, figuring out where Earth was. Remember, she was asking about Earth, and she said she might go there and, and uh, try to get them. So that's why he's like, okay, well, let's finish this now before anything else happens. So I remember that. I don't know. I think, and I thought, I just think what they were doing the entire time, like, Super like boring and campy, and I mean, I think I think beneath the Fantastic Four, or at least Fantastic Two and kids. I thought that this felt like a Black Science episode issue for me, where they're just traveling from universe to universe and doing all these not necessarily fun stuff. Because then when you get to that final final duel part where Grievous chasing them through everywhere, just destroying things, I was like, holy shit, things are hitting the fan. I thought it was a fun thing to actually give the call out, and it wasn't just to get Johnny and the thing, but it was to bring out the whole quote unquote family, or more importantly, I guess to me, is like the Avengers. I don't know how many of them actually were part of the future foundation, but to know that Reed cared enough to bring these guys in to start a, to, to finish this fight, like you said, yeah. instead of going to Earth and then duking out there, how many innocents were you going to lose? He's already the bad person, Griever is already there. She's already destroyed half the shit they made. Let's kick the shit out of her now and be done with it. I think that was the coolest part of seeing all those heroes because it gets me excited for the next issue because of how much I didn't like this issue. But, but campy is what Fantastic Four is. It's always been campy. I know adventure. it's campy, but it's like it wasn't even interesting. It was like, oh, you made squiggly monsters. And then you made, uh, I don't even have good alien terms at different planets. Like, I mean, that's what those that been like having adventures, learning about like science stuff, like having like, but they're creating their own science. So it's, how are you learning about it? If you're creating it, what, how does it, what does it mean? You exactly. Can, you Thank can learn, you. You can, learn, I don't know. You can learn about what you create. There's still something but you there. were the one that created it. So you know it, but how do you, but every time you create something, you don't understand it completely. So they're learning about what they're creating to understand better, to create better things. When I'd assume if Franklin's giving everything a sentient mind and to do its own thing, he's yeah, pretty much will. giving them free will that he doesn't know what they're going to choose to do. But I will admit there's one thing that bugged me when I'm watching Griever destroy everything. Most of those alien creatures look like men, male creatures. 
There's no female creatures. This book was sexist. <laughs> Damn. Uh, she says, uh, Griever says that she's going around killing all the universes that Franklin's created. So obviously Earth would be one of them. So that's why he's like, let's just stop this. So why does this power stop working? Because she goes, oh, good. The the young human is not, or his reign of creating things has ceased. Have you ever seen Dr. Know, we, Strange Love when he stands up out of the wheelchair? It's like that. Oh, I see. Okay, that does make sense. I'm sure it'll come by and we'll figure it out later. But I don't know. I really enjoyed this issue. I thought it was really, I mean, especially like the first one I defended, but it was also like it said really good, but I think it could have been better. This one I really did enjoy. I thought it was like what I expected from the first issue. And it solidified me never. I mean, I wasn't ready to drop this. I mean, I probably, I might have, you know, I I'll probably shit drop it like uh, but, six issues. But, uh, this is one book from, uh, come, come on, come on. Uh, this is one book here where I was like, uh, I read this issue and I was like, okay, I think Dan Slott understands these people. I, I think for me, it was more Dan Slott was writing this book. I think Dan Slott leaked through every single page and panel, and I was like, this is not fantastic. Really? Horror. Because I usually find his humor annoying. I didn't find anything that's annoying. In this well, book. Complete opposite of me. <laughs> I, I thought the humor was so on the nose. I was like, this is not funny. I didn't notice that it was Slott, and I that first issue, all it was was Slott writing, which bugged the crap out of me. But I was also jaded by issue 800 of Spider-Man, where we got nothing resolved. This didn't bother me. I actually kind of enjoyed it. There were things that made me smile. There's things that I obviously, um, I'm a hateful man. I did not laugh at anything, but I actually did enjoy this issue. Art is really great, too. Art was really great. That's Sarah for sure. Pichelli, I'm not sure who's doing the colors, but uh, I thought it, was really, it really looked nice. Uh, this for me, and I know Garrett's going to go crazy. This for me is a nine. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, wow. At least you didn't say a 10. <laughs> Because I was going to give this an eight. I did like the art, and the story wasn't as horrible as I know you disagree, but. Hey, we can all have our own opinions. What was your group rating? Six. Ooh, Holy shit. Bit. Dude, not good. Like, wanted me to drop issue three, but then I looked at who was going to be in there, and I'm like, nah, I got to stand at least for that. I think more importantly, I looked at the cover for issue three with all the Avengers and everybody. That's like, what oh, I'm saying. That's a good that's looking cover. That's why I want to stay on it. But. It's not Rubik. I think he's doing the covers, right? No. Yeah. So, so far, Dan Slott can't write that team. He needs 60 other heroes to keep me in this book. Now, my concern, though, is that if Spider-Man talks in the next movie, in the next book, Oof. Is it going to be good Spider-Man or is it going to be shit Spider-Man? It's be the same Spider-Man we've had for the last 10 years. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Speaking of Spider-Man, and I didn't even plan this transition. I just, oh, I really was just pissed snap. that I hate how he writes Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man number five written by Nick Spencer and art by Ryan Otley. Uh, first of all, I tell you what, these books look great. Yeah. I think Ryan Otley oh, is a great artist for Spider-Man. Um, a lot of the time when I look at the Spider-Man suit... Those his the web lines on his suit just don't look good. Otley is great at it, yeah. and I think Nick Spencer understands that fine line between Peter Parker is not hateful, but he really is down on his luck, and he doesn't have a funny bone. He is just gets the shit kicked out of him, even when he thinks he's doing the right thing, like paying somebody else's meter, which I did not realize is illegal. I didn't know that either. That's very educating. Which I don't know if that's legitimate for the city we live in or if it's on the big town or, or why, bigger places. Why wouldn't the city like more money? Yeah, why, yeah I said, like, why would they care? No one cares which who you pay for. Anyway. Mm. And then you get the Spider-Man part of it where all he is is just this fun-loving slacker who used Super that cocky, tries like, setting yeah. to beat the shit out of everything. Man, I read the uh, four and five back-to-back and I think i really enjoyed the the way that they brought peter and spider-man back together to make one character yeah i think that, and that's pretty cool homage to to kind of get you like hey this is an expensive spider-man is he basically had a rebirth in this book because you know he was separated and you kind of understand uh what makes spider-man spider-man it's not just the powers and it's not just the humanity it's like the combination of the two so uh very great book you know it's fun having the whatever the accelerator was that uh was that caused spider-man yeah. in the first place that was very interesting the um, genome accelerator or something like that right and and it was really sad i thought when they're running away uh away from the sentinels and that explosion happens and the human peter like gets like gets burned like pretty badly and he's like yeah man i don't have my powers and spider-man's like Whew, thank god that wasn't me and it's like you asshole yeah. like this guy he's he should be like any civilian you know like you should still want to save him and then eventually they started talking and it's like okay clearly this doesn't work without yep. us being together boom get together and i then, like that uh peter parker can still web sling 
Yeah. A lot of the time, I usually think that has to do with the spider sense on when he's web slinging through town. Um, you know, his sensor sensing goes off, so he webs the right things. He still has pretty good aim with that. Yeah. Brings that genome accelerator back down on him, reverses it. Big, huge explosion. Now, that conversation between the two of them going, um, I don't know if the big blue light is a good thing or not, but it's starting to feel like we're coming back together. It was just... Very well done. That yeah. art is like... God, I wish they would do a silent issue. Yes. Like, I think it'd be great. We also got to meet the new big bad, not Craven, which Craven was the cliffhanger. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so we better review the next issue when that comes out. But uh, so he's the next big villain. But the behind the scenes big villain is this new character I've never seen before. It's uh, it starts with an M. Yeah, well, more done. Where, dude, where'd you see his name at? Centipede guy. Yeah, I'll say, I say he looked like a millipede centipede. He looked like Rat King from Turtles, where he's just right. kind of the zombie ish thing. Um, creepy as hell. He kills, was it Mendel Strom, which is yeah. the scientist that helped Osborne make the green, as I say, green lantern, green, green goblin. goblin serum. I, do you know what? This book really got me excited for that new PS4 game. And I was already excited for it too. Just made me excited going, I'm finally getting a good written Spider-Man book. Yeah. And I am, I'm, I'm very satisfied. Sometimes a little wordy. Yes, it can be. But. You know I think what? that's just to kind of flesh out, you know, Peter's very intelligent. Yeah. He has a lot of things to say when he does have the opportunity to talk. And, you know, we do get a lot of great characters out of the Spider-Man. I mean, we get Aunt May this issue. We get Mary Jane this issue. We get Spider-Man and Peter Parker a lot this issue. And, you know, even throughout the last couple arcs, there's been one or two pages devoted to Craven's yeah. kind of like build up. And it's just fun. It's we, just really fun. I saw that Craven thing coming through. Like the first time I saw this guy yeah. running through the forest at that who else would he run from other than Craven? Then as we get more into this book, and it's like, oh, I fell down this hill, and uh, you know, predators do this thing. It's like, okay, it's Craven's going to be at the end of this issue. Yeah. So, I, and I was like, super excited for it, but I was also like, my one complaint is a little, almost too much on the nose. Where I was kind of expecting him to be hunting someone in the city, oh. where it clearly looks like he is somewhere, somewhere other than Central Park. Yeah, but. Uh, that's definitely going to come up here pretty soon and uh, I'll be a fun ride because I think lately when people put Craven in their book they haven't really been able to pull him off too yeah. well and I'm really hoping that Nick Spencer will be able to uh, with Ryan Otley's help create a really fun Craven arc and just make him the ruthless badass that he has like always been well I think that's my thing is that a lot of the time you get Craven and they either dial him way too down or they make him way too strong he's that perfect match where he's fast enough to beat that spider sense he's strong enough to go toe to toe with spider-man but it's that spider-man is just one step ahead or at least what's the he pulls his punches to an extent where he's always got the trap where he's always doing this thing I just, oh, I want Craven to be that strategist. I, w I want this, like, a solid match. Right. And so th I think that's my hope for this, and I think Nick Spencer can pull it off. Yeah, like, get a little get a little closer to that R rating. You need yep. to keep it so close to the teen side of things. So. I, w I want a Grim Hunt is what yeah. I want. Yeah, that'd be cool. So I give it, it I'm going to give this issue a 9. Yes. I thought this issue was very strong, and it gets me excited. This is the end of the first arc. It gets me very excited for the second arc. Uh <laughs> Yeah, Nick Spencer's been doing a great job so far, and that's a great... I just hope Ryan Otley never drops off this book. No, and if, if he does have to drop off, you need to bring bring in someone else in who either has something to offer that, that Otley won't do, so bring in Maliev or bring in you know, yeah. whomever. Big but, guns. Yeah, bring in a big gun if you're going to have a replacement. Right. Because this is one of those books that I am, I am much like Marvin is for Fantastic Four, and unless this really takes a dump, I am on this book for as long as it goes. Yeah. And it looks like the event's coming up. You don't even have to read. It's by Christos Gage. And yes, it might tie in a little bit, but no. I don't think according to Nick Spencer, he doesn't really care. Nope. All right, moving on. We got Wildstorm, Michael Cray, number 11, written by Brian Hill, with art by N. Stephen Harris, Dexter Vines. Uh, second to last issue, what'd you guys think? Uh, so, something about this book, um, the first, what, six issues were kind of like one-shots with different... Uh, there are, two, there are two issue arcs. There were two? There are two yeah, issue there were two arcs. Issue arcs. Flash, Green There's Arrow, Green, Green Arrow Aquaman. Flash, Aquaman. Okay, two issues. Then Constantine. But, he, but he's been going on through yeah. since Constantine's seven. been in, this, in Wonder Woman. So as I was going to say, like the last six here are going to be one arc instead of being like mini ones. Um, I don't think I have enjoyed this, those two issues, but I didn't think it was bad. I actually did... Uh, this issue here? Yeah, I thought actually it was decent. Um, 
I think the overall story of Funko Cray is actually pretty good over these 11 issues. Like what he's going through, like the his finding out about the host and all that stuff has been going on with him, his powers, you know, dealing with this. That I think has been great. And actually the probably the most enjoying part, enjoyable part for me in the second half. Um, but it's nice to see a, like a different take on these uh, DC characters that we know of. And like... Yeah. Um, and it I like uh, Brian Hill is a good writer, so it's never like I'm reading this being like, ah, this is bad. It's never been bad. It's just how much interest do I have in it? It's not. It's not bad. But I thought about that today. I was like, what I really wanted was this. We got the first six issues of Michael Cray fighting the Justice League or just fighting these heroes. That I actually kind of wanted it to be a you know he can fight Hellblazer for two issues, fight Diana Prince for one issue or two issues. And I kind of wanted to see a Batman or I want to see a Superman. I wanted to see a little bit more of these other characters because they reference bruce wayne in this yeah, issue they do and lex luther's in this issue yeah i think i think it's a very big i think they shouldn't have ever thrown out there that this is going to be 12 issues i think this should have been an ongoing because yep. like there's so much potential and you know even in this issue and i'd say the last issue like michael cray himself has maybe been in the last 10 pages of the last 60 yeah of this issue of the last two Oh, and this one I thought he was in it a lot. He was like at the beginning, and then they cut away for like the middle half, uh, middle part of the book. There's a long scene then, with Wonder Woman and Lex Luthor. Um, hey, well, the best cameo ever. I mean, come on. <laughs> to be fair, I actually thought Lex, I mean. at first that she was with uh, Constantine. 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 I think that's yeah. that's something to send attention. And until they you, talked about, until she called him. I'm pretty uh, sure that's what it's for. To be like, you think that it's Constantine, and then she says L- Luthor, and you're like, oh shit, this is Lex Luthor. No, nah, he was too okay. cunning to be Constantine. Constantine's a dumbass. Well, I know. The whole time I was like, this seems like a different guy. And well, that's like, the thing. Talking, he too satisfied <laughs> right too, like they're talking oh, and i'm like this seems like a different character and then when they say lex luther at the end then i'm like oh okay it's supposed to be lex and now, who's the artist we've had this entire series uh Is that steven niles i think steven niles so the guest oh, artist yeah. whoever was helping out when it wasn't the the flashbacks holy god horrible um, Michael Cray the, looked like Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles. The flashbacks or the, the no, ma- the flashbacks looked in, okay. immaculate. Yes, yes. Okay, it's not just everything me. else. He looks horrible. He looks weird. At yeah, this guy. Oh it, God, it, it looks like um. Oh, who's the art? Romita Junior? Yeah, almost. very blocky and, and big. Like, no, and not, not everybody is a square, right? There's other shapes. Yeah, I was not satisfied with that article. Nelson Blake the second did the flashbacks. Yeah, flashbacks looked amazing. And Stephen Harris did the uh, other ones. Which he's been doing the whole series though. Stephen well, Harris. it's it's changed Stephen then from Harris? what it used really? to be cuz I, I remember Man, those he's first sloppy then. Yeah, so I remember those first 6 issues looked amazing. Every issue looked like gold. At least in these last 6 then it's progressively gotten worse. Yeah. That I'm hoping issue 12 is a nice a, a nice bow that wraps this story up, and I think it can happen, but there's also a lot of things that we're kind of setting up that well, yeah, I know. there's, there's more going on than what we're told. We uh, got Brian Hill right now, and he's a great writer, but can he get everything that this series has amped up done I don't, in one I don't think more this issue? Is it. I was talking about the gauntlet. I don't think this is... I think this is a miniseries to set up Michael Cray and who he is and like this metamorphosis he's going through and like come to terms with what he is now. And then we'll get some sort of ongoing that he's part of. Like, he'll be part of a team or be part of his own book. I suppose he's one of those three Wild things. Storm, he could come back. He started in that book. He could come back to that book and finish it up with them. So, like, we don't know. Um, but I believe, like, the intention always was to let these people get their own miniseries to establish them and then have them go to an ongoing series of some kind. Uh, same thing, like, where Grifter was supposed to get his own miniseries. I don't know what happened to that. But um, they were supposed to be, like, to set them up and then be like, okay, now let's start a whole line of these ongoing books. And it's very, we talked about this when we talked about Wildstorm in the last issue. I'm not sure what their intentions are anymore, what the plans are, because it's changed a lot then. They haven't announced, I mean, I'm sure if those books were actually coming out, some sort of announcement. Oh, we would know by now. No. I think, I think once Wildstorm and Michael Cray are done, I don't know if anything but else But then is also they delayed Wildstorm, so maybe they're waiting on that to be done and then they'll announce something. Who knows? Yeah. All I know is, is that this has been, the first six issues were great. The rest has been uh, good, but it hasn't really been something like I'm really pumped to read. I used to really love to read this book every single time it came out. Now it's something I read, and, and I, it's not bad. I don't hate it, but also it's is it really something that, like, if I didn't get the first six and, like, really enjoy the aspect of seeing, like, these DC people be something else, like, oh, you know, then maybe I think I would have dropped this book. 
But I think that was the interest that really brought me in was to see these other DC characters that aren't acting anything like they do in the normal universe and to see this man single-handedly take them all out and to play to their weaknesses that I really was hoping to see that strategic mind of Bruce going up against him and to find out that Michael Cray really can take out this other Bruce Wayne. Or how do you take out the strongest man in the universe or in all all universes? How do you stop him without kryptonite? Yeah, um... I don't know. Like, this is, uh, I did really like the mythology with the god creature, whatever, but I think you brought him out a little too late. Like, you don't bring him out like the last, second to last issue and yeah. be like, okay, now this is turned into kill or be killed. You kill or I kill you. I, mean, <laughs> I thought that was what? weird too. Yeah. I was like, I was yeah, like, have what? we seen this right? Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to give this a seven. I think that, uh, it does have potential for that final issue, but, Man, I hope that doesn't get rushed because this book, this issue itself felt like, oh crap, we only have one issue left after this. We better get all these storylines wrapped up. I, I find this, these last couple issues have been kind of a chore to read that they do kind of take the bottom of the stack where I'm like, I don't know how much I really care. I would give this issue specifically a six with hopes that issue 12 wraps it up nicely for me. It was a sound for me. I, like, it was okay. Like, uh, if I had read this, like somebody was like, "Oh, you should, like if I read this like for free, it wouldn't be that big of a deal." But it definitely felt like this series, for at least for the last few, have been like making me regret buying it. Um, it's not bad though; like it's not a bad story. It's just not right. worth my money. Yeah, I, but and then but when you're this far in, it's like, well, okay, that's what you, I mean. You could like, pull Marvin and I get that last issue. <laughs> and but, I mean, and then we're all reading it. If you're a normal human show. being. You get the last issue. Yeah. Well, so I think I have a film that will talk issue twelve just to wrap it up. But uh, the first volume is on Hoopla. I would recommend reading that. The yeah. first six are really good, and it really is something like I thought the rest would. It kind of lost energy. I think it felt like the first six were really energetic. Really have like a like Alex was saying, like it's really fun, but also like cool to see how these people interacted. These DC people we thought we knew and how they're different. And then after that, it just became kind of stagnant and more like the only thing that, I, that carried my interest was like learning about more about Michael and nothing else. So like, but even the learning about Michael really wasn't as interesting after a while because they just kept dragging it out that yeah, I've I'll got, I've that, got yeah. this thing inside me. And I definitely was more interested in it, but you're right. Like it could have been resolved like in two issues. I mean, that, and that's what my hope was that if you're going to do the Hellblazer and even have Diana in it for two issues. He was going to find out what his power was. He was going to overpower her and, you know, be able to fight back against magic. I was like, holy shit, that's going to be great. Yeah. But we got what we got, and that, that's how it is. Well, uh, for the first time ever, uh, I have a solo review. Oh, yeah. Cemetery Beach, number one. This is Warren Ellis. Who's the artist here? Let me look at the artist here. Michael Trees. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> Trees. Uh, Cemetery Beach number one. This is Warren Ellis, and uh, I'll get into it in a second here. But let me just tell you about the book while I look that up here. Um, this is a book where the cover grabbed me. I talked about it in the gauntlet, like it really in in on the uh, forecast. I was like, this looks really interesting, and I know it's supposed to be a mini seven issues. Um, the artist is Jason Howard. It's supposed to be seven issues, and. So I go into this book thinking, right, Warren Ellis is known for his world building. He's working on Wildstorm, Wildstorm I've liked. A lot of stuff goes on. He's known for being confusing kind of sometimes. Sometimes there's too much exposition, right? So what do I think about a solo Warren Ellis book? Uh, getting into this book, I first was surprised because it does not feel like a Warren Ellis book. Uh, it's very funny. It's very uh, different. Is it confusing at all? No. What? Um, there's a lot of connected energy. There's a lot of information, but the main character is so likable and so his characterization is so well done that he dumps all this information in an interrogation scene and it feels natural because the way, and you'll have to read to see, but, uh, basically what it is is like, they're going to torture him. He's like, he goes, don't torture me. What are you going to torture me for? He goes, what do you want to know? I'll tell you my name. And he tells him his name. And uh, this is the thing about me doing a solo review. I don't remember his name. But um, <laughs> he goes, here's my name. And he tells him the whole story. So basically, uh, they created uh, they created a way to jump off world. And uh, now when they go off world, like... Uh, <laughs> you <shut> the <laughs> they go, so anyways, they jump off world. And you know, they, he goes to a different world to... Uh, infiltrate he's like a spy he's like oh like i that's what he does he goes becomes a spy basically 
Uh, the art is really great. It's really fun. And uh, by then in the first issue, there's a great action scene, great action, uh, Warren Ellis. Uh, a lot of this book is told through the art, which, uh, which is our favorite parts of Wildstorm, right? It's when they do that. And this book uh, has a lot of that, too. I was just surprised because it really is really funny. The character I really do like a lot. And it is something that uh, at the end of the issue, they go through and they have like a blue print of the uh, machine that helps them jump off world, which is like Warren Ellis. Obviously, he's like put more thought into it than probably is necessary, but um, I liked it. And it Does was that really... cover pay homage to North by Northwest? Is that why it's like tilted like that? No, it's tilted oh, okay. the opposite way. So. Oh, the opposite way. Oh. Uh, I give it a strong nine. And it might be. What is the, what's the first book we talked about? Finish four? Nah. Oh, the worst book the, we talked about? Might be on the same page. Might be on the same page, though. Or the same of goodness, of greatness. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'll admit, I looked at it. I was like, "Oh, that sounds. It looks good. The cover looked good." Yeah. But I was like, "I just, I, I don't need it." I really enjoyed it. Well, actually, let me show you something here. And when, if you guys are reading this, um, I, I nah, do want to read it. I do want to read it at some point. But you know, again, we're kind of starting to get into an age where everything comes out, and I'm just, I've been trying to be more conscious about picking up minis. Because I would say if you like them. sci-fi and action, pick up the book because that's what kind of book it is. Yeah, I like those. I like both those things. And it actually, is if you've been a weary Warren Ellis, like me, confusing and kind of like slow books, it definitely got into it right away, and it definitely wasn't confusing. So, mm. and it actually was pretty funny. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you know, it also was uh, pretty funny. Farmhand number three, written and art by Rob Gillery. Gil- Gillery. 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 Got it. Gillery. Rob Gillery. Jeez. RG. That was tough. Um, Farmhand number three. You know what I find really surprising about this book and why I think that you and I like it so much? Does it remind you a shit ton of like Goosebumps? Yes. Dude, like this book is like horror mixed with comedy and like it's really good. I, I like issue one was good and I was a little, little weary getting into it. I, you know, Marvin was reading Chew for the longest time and he's like, oh, this art is so good. So I got into this thing and is the, is the writing going to be as good? Is the storytelling going to be strong? That story is great. It is. It's, it's got a little bit of everything. There's, you know, mythology, there's mystery, there's comedy, there's macabreness, there's monsters. This yep. book, we had a freaking dude. Dog that, monster. So the dog monster eats some fertilizer or whatever. And, like, they're like, oh, shit. I'm like, you know, because the art style is pretty, I wouldn't say cartoony, but it's, like, very uplifting. It's not like but everyone looks like they want to. It's lighthearted artwork. Yeah, and not, not super scary, but I did kind of, like, jump when that dog turned into this giant-ass beast monster. And I was like, oh, man, he looks vicious. Like I, I do get a little, um, and I'm, I don't, um, I don't faint at the, excuse me, at the sight of blood or guts or what have you. But. With the two kids, and I don't remember their names. I'm pulling a Marvin here. Ezekiel's kids, they're working at their grandfather's farm. And farm is a, a weird term to use because he's growing body parts. And they go, oh, we got to go trim the, fing- the f- fingerlings. So they're finger-shaped plants. And they go and they cut their fingers. And- so these things, they bleed. Right. Oh, yeah. And they go to shave the faces. And they have to go, what, pick the teeth out of the replacement mouth flowers yeah it's very disturbing it's just creepy and then they have the the melon patch which is clearly an innuendo towards breasts and you got all these creepy dudes all lined up in a line to go into this melon patch yeah i and then you get then like you said this this client brings in a dog and clearly the dad and the the aunt to the kids no, sorry. The grandfather and the aunt to the kids go, you can't bring your dog in here. Right. It's absolutely Fuzz, uh, for, forbidden. Fuzznuts goes with me everywhere. That's the unfortunately the name of the dog. Yeah. Dog gets out of her hand and like Garrett said, is eating fertilizer or eating something that uh, it should not be eating and mutates into a plant fuzznut. Did you see a quote in there that reminded you a little bit of me? Just a tiny bit? You have to say it to me. Okay, when the daughter... Like I saw it and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like how they figure this out? And then she says, "Holy shit balls!" <laughs> yes. I yes. like I fl- I turned the page and I was like, "She stole my fucking line!" <laughs> holy uh, shit balls! Yeah, holy shit balls! Can I ask balls. you a question? Yeah. I thought that you said earlier is because with Rob, I'm not sure. Uh, Ron, isn't it Ron Gillery? Rob. No, Rob. R O B. 
Um, I'm not sure if exactly it could be uh, that you were saying the right thing, or maybe there's a comma that I missed. When you said a giant ass monster, is it just a big monster? It's not a giant. Oh, ass sorry. I should clarify. It is a giant dog monster, but it's just huge. Yeah, but, okay. it, but it does but have it, a big. It, 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 it surprise me. If I, yeah, I guess that makes monster. sense. We're talking about body parts. Let's say, but it does yeah. have a big ass. Uh, yeah. so okay. <laughs> when you said that, I was like. That's why I laughed because I was like, "That's funny." He's an ass monster. Well, you know, it's the opposite second. of the melon patch, <laughs> <laughs> the the shit fields. I don't know the shit fields and McCoys, but uh, and there's there's so there's one other thing that's been happening throughout this whole issue is that the son, the 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 youngest son, the grandson, sees this caterpillar dog ish. It, it reminds me of uh, what's that cat? The Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland, a little bit. Kind of just shows up everywhere this kid is. If he's going to the restroom, it's in the the windows. If it's outside or he's on the bus, it's on the bus with them or sitting on top of the bus or whatever. Just being kind of like there and that's what's like taking his entire attention. So it's like a familiar for someone. Okay, If you ever played Le- um, Gauntlet Legends, there's a familiar. You can unlock a dragon or a what have you. It, that's kind of what this, this is little protector for this kid. Right. And so when this big, mean monster dog is running amok and attacking people, this little doggy caterpillar thing saves this kid and yeah. saves the sister as well. And uh, by the way, I want to get the aunt's weapon, that laser beam. Yeah, the... Guy, whatever arms. Holy shit! I did love. I did laugh quite a bit when she was like, "Yeah, no one told me to get any <laughs> high quality arms." I was like, "Well, came in handy." <laughs> nice. It it's just really fun, fresh, and exciting. Like, and then you know, speaking more about that dog, like I love that. And it's kind of like ghost mind or whatever's happening. It's like laying in a field of eyeballs, and I'm just like, so how does that like seem oddly comforting for this dog? But everyone else would be like, "Okay, dude, there's like." <laughs> plants with eyeballs like all around you so yeah it's not it's something unlike i've ever seen before i th- I think there's enough mythology in there and i'm like you know obviously the dad is holding a huge secret back yeah. and we we all want to know that secret um you know what the conclusion of this issue was the girl was getting plants sprouting out of her back right or was that last issue that was last issue okay well so some obviously these seeds as they're called are going fa- like they're going crazy yep um so we're they're gonna taking find over out. the human body it looks like right. replacing parts well they do replace parts but i think that comes at a price that we don't know yet well but i mean it's spreading to other than just if you got a nose job so your nose is a was a plant at one point now it's kind of spreading to everywhere else because the girl has got her spinal cord or her spine is being replaced into like flowers right so i think we're getting a little stay out of the basement from goosebumps where i feel this is my prediction that the grandpa is a plant and not an actual human oh and so basically by giving all these people his parts he's spreading his throughout everywhere that's just my theory otherwise he is john hammond from jurassic park and he's put this stuff together not realizing what he's done right thinking oh man i'm doing this for every i'm doing this great thing for everybody so they can see, you know, their life it doesn't have to be just a noseless human. You can get a new nose. Well, who knows? Stop nosing around, man. Nice. But eventually, I feel like we're going to get like yeah. garden zombies or something. Like all of them are going to turn crazy or something. And we got told in this issue from the letters page, not just a five issue run. Whoa, it's Alex, an ongoing slow down. at least twenty five to thirty issues. You read the letters page? Rock on, right? Holy. We got a milestone over here, but yeah, that's exciting. Holy shit balls. Yeah, holy shit balls. He said it's going to be uh, 25 to 30 issues, and that's exciting because yeah. I... It's not your word, by the way. Holy shit balls? Yeah. Dude, I used to say that all the time. Did Michael I not? Michael Buble said that like seven years ago. Who the hell is Michael Buble? Is his last name Bubble? He's a famous singer. What does he sing? Everything by Frank Sinatra? Doesn't make him famous. He used he in a viral video like seven or ten years ago used uh, holy shit balls, he said. And so, since you're only 10 years old, then I, it's before you were born. Did you use the Google Eater to look that up? No, it's it was viral like 10 years ago, dude. I don't even know that. Did I say holy shit balls a lot? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm your, I guess. And I don't there, think he got it from Michael Bubbly. Uh, yeah. I guess every time Ooh, you talk, I do ignore Champagne, it. So, I, I don't remember you ever saying that. But. Okay. Well, you know, you don't remember a lot of things. <laughs> so, as every audience member of the show can attest to. Um, I give this issue a nine. Yeah, this is, I, this is I a solid really nine. enjoyed it. It's so much fun, and like just kind of like going into October, 
for some reason gets me super amped for Halloween. Every time, every time it gets near Halloween and almost to my birthday, I'm just like, you know what I want to read is a Stephen King book. Uh, this right here could be enough of a Stephen King book for right. me. Right. Like I would Some love to see this as crap. like an adaptation too. Yes. Like oh, when it's done. Like see it as like a Netflix show or something like that. That'd be cool. I read this and I just go, man, I want to. I want to read two so badly again. Yeah. Get back into it. Oh, that's really good. All right. Final issue of the night. The horror movie. Now. Uh, Red Hood Outlaw number twenty six. So, Jason Todd Breaking Bad. I mean, he's all you know. He started out as a Red Hood. Got a little redemption. Tried to be a basically an anti-hero, and then now he's full on. I mean, even more so an anti-hero. Um, he is. He pretty, he's he, not afraid to kill anyone. He'll yeah, kill. So he's he's the Punisher for the most part, right? Uh, he's got a new outfit, and he has he wears a um, what's the mask called? Isn't it like Venetian mask? Like all the superheroes wear? Yeah, this is this is kind of like the. Um, Oh crap! What's it's like Shredder's mask? Yeah, right. He looks like Shredder without the, the deformities. Yeah, um, uses a knife and a crowbar as weapons. Um, he has uh, boots. Like he's got like bat. What he's got a completely new outfit, but it's still we're just trying to describe it to you because like it it's hard. Literally, to is a red hood it, because it looks like he's just wearing kind of a sweatshirt with a bulletproof vest that's literally just a vest, and he wears his hood up. Yeah, and it's just a red hood. I mean, it, it's it's it a little awesome. on the nose, but he looks great, and yeah. he really does look like a badass. That he shows up, he will kill you, right? And oh my god, I just did I say who this is written by? I don't no, think so. No, written by Scott Lobdell and art by Pete Woods. And Pete Woods has done a great job. Yes, um, I love the new bat symbol for Red Hood. Yes, it it looks really great. Um, you know, I think even leading up to Red Hood being in this issue, where that cops on the road. And he's like, "Hey, stop the bus! Like, I need to, I need to get her." And he's like, "It's against the rule. I get fired." He's like, "I don't either. You stop it, or I kill you, or I kill you." And so he's like, "All right, well, gives me so many options." <laughs> Grabs the girl, and like, you can tell it's him, but you can't. You don't ever see his face until finally he reveals himself to this agent, and they're like, "Oh my god, you're the Red Hood!" Like, blah blah blah. And then he starts changing into his new outfit for the first time. Oh, it looks so incredible. And basically, uh, Red Hood takes on this biker gang by himself um, because he's looking for some organization, whatever happened in the the annual. The underground or the underlife or something. Right. Underlife. Underlife. Yeah. And like, that's that's fine. Um, I don't know if I care much about that. It's still an interesting because it's like the start of his journey, but he doesn't care if he kills. And like there was like that whole three pages of him just murdering this gang, like stabbing them, hitting them with crowbars, like caving their face that, in. That crowbar when he hit, or so the so the big boss guy he tells the the bad guy biker goes, um, "You guys can either get out of my way, or I'm going to stick that flare up your butt." Right. I mean, it, it felt like Hancock telling this guy, "Your head is going up." his ass right and i was like holy shit he's i mean and he's serious about it and so then he starts kicking ass and stabbing people throws a molotov at one of the other guys burns the other guy in the mouth with the flare then he gets done beating the shit out of everybody else and he goes to the big boss guy and the bad guy's like don't kill me i'm not gonna kill you i told you i'm gonna stick this flare up your ass and right I was like holy shit and he does he's it. not gonna do it which probably isn't good for his battle going in the oh, future cool. he is gonna have some fiery shits <laughs> nice <laughs> um you know he kind of gets a new not detective but that lady who's in the hospital like i think there's gonna be that relationship in this book yeah. for um the ongoing future um it's just very exciting because like if not saying this book didn't have a purpose before, but I think it's it's fun having a new focus for Jason Todd. Like he's like, this is my mission. Like it's been a while since I've been on a book where there's like a mission in that book. Yeah. Like where there's a mission head first. Like this is my mission. I need to accomplish this objective. Like I can't think of the last comic that I've read like that. Well, and and the big thing for him is that he thinks that Artemis and Bizarro are gone. So right. his his family, he's gotten the shit kicked out of him by Batman. He's he's lost. He's right. this lost guy. And he's, I will break that fidget spinner. He won't, <laughs> and he's not going to Sanctuary. Everyone's going to Sanctuary, even uh, Arsenal is going there. Um, but he said, Sanctuary's for pussies, basically. Pretty much. And I think that's going to end up hurting Jason more in the end because he, uh, you know, he does need to cope with his demons. 
Um, you know, I, th- I still think, you know, this, all this anger at Penguin for like his dad and everything. I think that was a little rushed into the series, but for where we're at right now, super great. And you know, this is going to end with him either confronting Batman again, or maybe he runs into Artemis and Bizarro again. And like, they kind of reteach him who he is. But until then, high velocity, high action, getting a crowbar to the fucking face. Here well, we go. And I think that's the thing is I think Red Hood is I think Jason is going to lose himself in what he's doing because yeah. he, he no longer cares for human life. His objective is to beat the crap out of everybody. And right. so I am I'm I think you're right about the the agent because I think they even had a conversation going, I I need your help. I can't touch these guys. But you can. Right. And so when Red Hood ends up going to the big mob boss for this issue, you know, he's he beats the living piss out of him again. What does he do? Does he throw him out of a there's something he does to him. Yeah, I can't quite remember. But I don't remember if it was he was in a car, I think, and then he runs him down and the anyway. It this issue was great. I would give this a nine. I'm gonna give it a nine also. It wasn't quite a ten yet, because I think that that's those are issues that are gonna come. Yes. Cause I think we're just getting introduced to this new Jason stuff. Jason, Jason Todd. Styles. Jason Todd. Um but I think that, you know, everyone should give the issue 26 a chance and give it a chance as like if, as if it's in issue one. Yep. So definitely go check that out. Uh, it's Red Hood and Red Hood Outlaw now is the new title. No, I thought it was still Red Hood and the Outlaws. It is, but, but they cross out and the and okay. plural yes. on Outlaws. <laughs> okay. So sounds like shit to me. You sound like shit to <laughs> me. Don't talk about the Fantastic Four like that. Red Hood and the Outlaws number 26. What is it? Right? Yeah. Uh, Farmhand number three. Yep. Uh, Fantastic Four number two. Cemetery Beach number one. Um, Spider Man. Michael Cray number eleven. And Spider Man. Maybe Spider Man number three. Five. Five. Oh, buddy. Oh, you're, oh, not, you're not getting any more, right? Uh, no, I never jumped on board. So oh, I thought um, you did. No, I never got any of them. Oh. So I might catch up one day. Uh, we'll see. But uh, hey, look at this. Twenty million views. December thirteenth, twenty ten. Why would you, I ever? Why would I ever watch a live show of YouTube? Nobody Michael said Bublé. that. I'm just saying, Michael. Because you did watched be, that when you were he seventeen did years old. You. Viral, twenty million views. The weird thing is but that maybe he had said you it. You guys first. are my best friends, and I said it around you for. I'm. Giving I'm not you. saying you don't say it. I'm saying you're second class. I didn't get. It. I bet Michael Bublé got it from somebody else. There's no way he. I didn't created. say he made it up. I'm saying that went viral, so it's his thing. You can't say it. Holy thing. shit! It is my thing with you guys. <laughs> Or at least this guy Where understood was it the Where reference. Was it in Farmhand? They probably yeah. got it from that video. That's probably what they saw. So. Yeah, they're like, mm, can't wait Holy to Holy shit, it's the punish. Yeah, they checked Marvin's viewing list. Ooh, Michael Buble live. <laughs> <laughs> Supercon, Return of the Con, December 28th, 29th, and 30th. Wednesday Comics will be doing a live show at Supercon, September 28th at 8 p.m. That's going to be about a two-hour show. And uh, uh, Gary, what are we going to have at that show? Uh, well, we're going to be doing some games. Uh, for all those of you that just listened to our first ever game show, it'll be kind of similar to that. And yes, because Marvin's making the games, the rules will make sense. But uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, guests from the show's past. Uh, maybe Hashtag Guest Us One will be there. Maybe the Roots of the Swamp thing might be there. I don't know. Might Come be and see. Very A lot of surprises. We'll see who will be there. We're playing games. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's September 28th at 8 p.m., two-hour show, $10 to get you in for the day, but I re- recommend the weekend pass because you want to be there for Supercon 2018, September 28th, 28th, and 30th. Uh, go to supercon.com for more information. So we're going to play a little game here that I made up. It's called uh, Secret Origins. Here's how it works. I'm looking at the DC encyclopedia I have right here. I have a Marvel one, too. I don't know where it went. Adios, Marvel. Hey, you know what? Marvel changed so much about it, they probably took it with them. Um, we're going to go through the DC encyclopedia from 2004. So it's a little old, so it won't be anything with New 52 in here. Um, but what I'll do is, and the game here is, you are playing against each other. Who wants to keep track of the score? No, I'll keep track of the score. Um, the game is... I thought he was going to grab that comic book and doodle. Oh, it. wouldn't surprise me. I will start saying somebody's origin. I will take out their name. It's the only thing I'll take out, the name of who this is. And then the first person buzz in with their name. Alex. And tell me who it is. We'll get a point. We get Alex versus Garrett. And we got... Um, we're going to do nine of them, we'll say. Can I do a quick one? A great writer at Marvel comes over to DC and writes a horrible comic called Superman, but a great comic called Action Comics. Alex. 
Yeah. Brian Michael Bendis. Oh, my God. He got it. Holy shit. Oh, we're doing characters. Is that a character? <laughs> Brian Michael Bendis is a character. <laughs> How's, how does he have an origin story? Actually, huh? actually to I mean, be, this is no, his no, origin no, story at DC. But he really is. He, a, he was a character in uh, Nailbiter, which Ooh. is by Joshua Williamson. He actually shows up in the book. And then that was the Does worst. He ruin that and that too? was the worst issue of the series. Yeah, that's what happens, man. <laughs> so here we go, DC Encyclopedia. Alex, don't look at this. But don't this worry, he writes some good things. Uh, you gonna... know, the weird thing is, I've read, I've read some of his stuff that is good, but in the more recent past, it has never been good. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been good for me personally. Maybe some other people disagree. They're dead. <laughs> you guys hear this? It's page turning. We can hear it. I thought you don't page turn anymore, Marvin. What does that mean? You read your books digitally. Uh, <laughs> when Blank was just the boy, his parents, uh, archaeologists C.C. and Marilyn Blank, were killed by a treacherous assistant. Uh, I won't give you that name either. While on a dig at the tomb of Ramsey II as Abu Simbel, at Abu Simbel, Egypt, Blank was separated from his sister Mary and left in the care of their unscrupulous uncle Ebenezer C.C. Blank's half brother. Uh, unfortunately, Blank threw Billy. Oh, sorry, threw Blank out and stole the youth's trust fund money set aside for Blank's care and welfare. Uh, Garrett. Yes. Billy Bats and Shazam. Uh, I told you we're talking 2004 here. Shazam has existed in comics. Yeah, Alex. 2004. Here. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. There we go. Oh, I thought that was DC Comics. It is. It is. But it was before he got changed. Two thousand four. We're talking there. <clears throat> His name. He, he 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 got the name Shazam after two thousand four. Yeah, only in New Fifty Two. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, he's always been Captain Marvel. Uh, there we go. To be fair, I'm hoping you're doing characters that we know. <laughs> <laughs> I so well, that's the thing is, it's like this has everybody in it. So I'm trying to be like, not be like, oh, how about we do the fucking origin story for Killer Shark? Um, not that nobody knows who Killer Shark, shark is. Who's a shark that kills? Holy shit, Jaws. <laughs> They know. To be fair, I'm kind of surprised you didn't go through earlier and decide which ones you're going to do. No, I, I, take I, I thought uh, today uh, I would just go through this and see. Don't look at it. I'm not. He's cheating over here, Garrett. Don't cheat, man. Point taken away. You get a demerit. Insanely inspired by Lewis Carroll's children's book, Alice of Interest in Wonderland, Master Mesmerist Blank. Alex. Garrett. Damn. Alex, Mad Hatter. Yep, correct. Wait, is it? Does it say Mad Hatter? Or say Jervis Tetch. <laughs> it says Mad Hatter. Okay, um, That's some bullshit. <laughs> Would you have given it to me if I had said Jervis Tetch? No, I get, I get the name. Oh. The, oh, you need the general name. Got I need it. the name that they go by. General name. He goes by Jervis. <laughs> that they go by. You right know the weird here. thing is a lot of time Bruce calls him Batman calls him Jervis or Tetch. Ready? Third round. Third round. <laughs> here we go. While on a South Sea cruise. Playboy billionaire Blank was knocked overboard and Alex. washed up. Yes. Green Arrow. Correct. Damn. I thought you would get that one. That's why I fucking picked it. <laughs> These blanks are confi- are distracting me. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> They're confusing me. I don't know what the character Human is. target. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, oh, here we go. Every 90 days, uh, I'm not going to give you this name. Every 90 days, Blank can expect a visit from Blank. The Blank loves a challenging the Blank with magical mischief, games that can only end when Blank tricks him to saying his name backwards. The oh, fifth dimension. Garrett. Yes. Mixoplitalic. What's his full name? Mr. Mixoplitalic. Yeah, okay. There you go. That's good because I can't say his name. <laughs> Mixoplitalic. Imp of the fifth dimension. Uh, ready? Yep. Hands up, as his hands up, as his faster, faster, come on. Botanist Blank Blank was a shrinking violet when she went to work for a famed scientist. Alex? Yes. Poison Ivy? Correct. I'm pretty sure Blank Blank was Pamela Isley, but I'll just fuck off. <laughs> it is, but it says Poison Ivy on top, so. It's bullshit. <laughs> Jesus. I thought we were playing Jeopardy style where the Blanks. Although answer. not, here's the next round. Ready? Hands up, as his. Although not truly, hands on buzzers. Although not truly immortal, the international terrorist Blank was one of the most long living men on the planet. In Alex, Arabic, yes. Rajat Al Ghul? Yep, correct. Or, I'm sorry, Raz Al Ghul, because he and I aren't friends. Could have been Vandal Savage. 
Uh, did, did, did Randall Savage. Vandal, Randall, <laughs> Randy Randall, Savage. Randy, you the dirty bastard. Bone saw is ready. That's for Corey. Again. That was for Corey. Hashtag guess this one. Go kill yourself. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Bone saw is cool. Ready? Bone saw is cool. There exists countless parallel universes. Some with superheroes, some without. In what's in one such pocket universe, Blank was not the sole survivor of Krypton. That, Garrett, yes. Be Earth Two, nope. Sorry, Earth Prime. No, damn. We're doing characters here, so it's not a character. Uh, um, you're describing a planet, so that well, maybe wait for more information. That world's blank, however, died in the 30th century while saving the universe's legion of superheroes. Three Kryptonian criminals managed to survive as well and found their way to Earth. No one powerful enough was left to stop them. That world's Lex Luthor, a noble scientist, created a life form from proto matter using genetic material supplied Garrett. by yes Bizarro, no, supplied by Lana Lang, hoping he could defeat the deadly trio. Garrett, yes, uh, Superboy, no. I'll read some more. The shape shifting being was dispatched to a parallel world, hoping. Superman could help. The Man of Steel answered the call to arms and was forced to kill the three Kryptonians to save the world, but not before the life form, known as the Matrix, was reduced to an anamorphic mass. Superman brought Matrix to his world and there recuperated on the Kent family farm. Out of respect for its savior, Matrix took the family Alex. form. Yes. Cyborg Superman? No. Garrett? Yes. Mono. No. The Matrix took a feminine form and used more limited superpowers to become blank. When Superman exiled himself to space to atone for having killed for the first time, Blank took on his peacekeeping role. Anything yet? Oh, Garrett. Yes. Nightwing. No. Garrett. Yes. Flamebird. No. Okay. We, Alex, <laughs> Steel. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no? <laughs> no, it isn't. Oh, I said yeah, because you said Alex, and I said no. Oh, I see. Yeah, you just said too fast. Then. Garrett. Yeah. Trinity. No, you said that's a she naively <laughs> fell under Lex Luthor's thrall for a while until she saw him for the manipulative despot that he was. She then saved the life of Lana Davers, Danvers on the town of... Okay, Garrett. Yes. Supergirl. Yep, right. Holy shit, that was a hard one. So I remember people always talk about like Supergirl has this like, convoluted kind of origin. This is the original origin. You see how convoluted that fucking shit is? Yeah, Where awesome. she's like not his cousin from like the different... Yeah. So this, they do this one in the, more, in the movie, you think? Where she's from a different dimension. You know what, they knowing DC, in. yeah. They might. <laughs> they might. Ready? Hands on muscles. Everybody ready? Ready. Blank, the last son of Krypton, represents the very best in humanity. His native world of Krypton. Alex? Yes. Superman? Correct. <laughs> I even, so this waited, time, this I even time, waited for you to no, get No, but this time Blank was the fucking Blank. <laughs> This is blank and blank. <laughs> I even waited for you to get it. I know. I picked it because I was like, <laughs> holy thought, blank balls. I thought you would get it. <laughs> All right. One more round left. Round nine. Let's see who gets Jesus. it here. Dude, you're kidding my ass. I've heard every one, but. There was literally one where he's like, blank does blank to blank, but blank blank well, at does first, blank. I was blank. removing a lot of <laughs> names because they just made it too apparent. And then I figured out that that Supergirl one. I was like, they need all this shit. Well, I could just told us her name. We still wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> We need everybody else from the super family and some bad guys. What you guys just favorite obscure DC character? <clears throat> like somebody mm. who probably can't do his own ongoing, but maybe it's in the background a little bit. A BC character? Ooh, that's tough. Um, Beast Boy? <clears throat> he's probably, I mean, he's probably a B, almost an A, because he's uh, getting he's more. He's up there. He's in a lot of stuff. Teen Titans. He's getting and, more popular. What about the Metal Man? Yeah, that's, that's a good one. They're always fun. Red Tornado. That was what I was thinking of. All right, for the last one, you're ready. <laughs> well, can't get more ready than this. Master Thespian, able to assume any number of accents and throughout makeup and body posture, imitate the physical Garrett. identities. Yeah. Uh, Clayman. No. Uh, imitate the physical identities of others. Blank is a superior bodyguard for hire. For a hefty price, Blank disguises himself as a client who believes he or she is in danger and lures their would-be assassins out of hiding, drawing their fire on himself. When Blank was still a boy, he witnessed his father, Philip's murder at the hands of a loan shark. Blank tried to Alex. save his father. Yes. Clayface. No. Okay. Oh, you said Clayman. Clay I was like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> Clayman the artist. Yeah. Artist. No, I just, well, I mean, I, I know what you meant. Yeah. Clayman. I right actually then. thought he said Clay. I didn't even hear you say Clayman. Oh. But then when you said I was well, like, that's oh, you, yeah, you're right. That's when you that. said no. I thought, oh, well, he said it wrong. So maybe that's why he didn't count it. Uh, when Blank was still a boy, he witnessed his father Phillips murder at the hand of a loan shark. Blank tried to save his father by jumping in front of the killer's gun. But the thug brushed the young boy aside and emptied his gun into the elder Blank's body. Traumatized by his father's death, the young Blank vowed to never that no one would ever suffer the fear his father did before he died. The young man spent years obsessively studying martial art techniques and weaponry, trained to become a top athlete. Alex? Yes. Deathstroke? No. He became the ultimate method actor, impersonating others by living their lives. He eventually opened up a special kind of private investigation agency and hired himself out as the blank. Eventually, Alex, yes. The question. No. Eventually, the blank became addicted to impersonating clients, even Garrett, the most. Yeah. The elongated man. No. Damn. Even the most unethical ones. No, he no. submerged his own personality so deeply, he forgot what it was like. Blank is now almost incapable of personal relationships for he is never sure the emotions he feels are his own or those somebody he has intimidated. That's the whole origin. That's all I got. Garrett. Yeah. Swamp thing. No. I'll give you a hint. Garrett said it tonight as a wrong answer. Alex, Vandal Savage. So that's why I was like, let me look it up. No. <laughs> Can you read that whole origin again? <laughs> so you've said his... I'll say when his first appearance was. We'll go through these things now. Now they have little things here, factoids. First appearance. Action Comics number 419, December... Of nineteen, oh, Alex yeah. Superboy, no Garrett, yeah Parasite, no Alex Monell, Status Hero, no not Monell, <clears throat> Garrett Nightwing, Garrett Flamebird, no it's a dude isn't Flamebird a real girl? name blank, uh, yes I, helpful <laughs> occupation bodyguard and private detective, base mobile, height six feet, weight one eighty, eyes blue, hair gray black. Special powers and abilities. Olympic level athlete, skilled martial artist, and marksman, and unparalleled, unparalleled master of disguise. Well, let me give you another hint. Before Garrett gave that wrong answer, I would have guessed you both didn't know this person. So you might not even know it, Alex. But he has said it, so that's why I brought it up. I, I want to give this guy a point. <laughs> so I thought maybe he would get it, but obviously we're here. Randall honestly. Savage. <laughs> <laughs> not Randy <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Um, hmm. Randall Savage. <gasps> Randall's ready. You think Randall? Remember Randall's the grocery store. Yeah. You think he owns it? No, he's an actor. He's an actor. He impersonates people. He's a bodyguard. He acts like he's them to draw out their assassins and then kill them. He puts himself in the way. Garrett. Yes. Ubu. You literally said it tonight. <laughs> Think of these words. <laughs> I've said a lot of people's names. You literally tonight. said it. Shit balls. Garrett. Michael himself, Buble. He puts himself <laughs> bubble. Bubbly. <laughs> Holy shit balls, bubbly. Bubbly, 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 boo. Hmm. Think about he puts himself in a way of he takes his client out and he pretends he's them so that way the assassin tries to kill him. And he's so well versed in martial arts and being an athlete that he can take them out. He's an excellent marksman. I'll give you another hint. He used to have a TV show on Fox. Oh, Garrett. Yes. The Human Target. Oh, shit. The Human Target. Guess what? Three to nine, bitch. (laughs) Uh, One, two, three, three, four, five, six. Three to six. Alex is the winner here with Secret Origins. Uh, That last one was... uh, was actually pretty good, but I mean, you guys, I mean, I, he obviously guessed it when I said TV show. That TV show was really good. Hey, it's on the DC Universe app, which came live today, actually. Well, oh, two days it? ago. Is the whole thing on there, though? I mean, that show's pretty short. It wasn't on Yeah, I think it only lasts six episodes. So uh, it was really good. It's basically a guy like, it's like Alex, if I knew somebody was coming to kill you, I would pretend to be you. No, maybe, you wouldn't. You'd just let them kill me. Maybe you, uh, put, you know, get a little salt and pepper out, like out top. <sighs> Push it. And I would say that all the time, and they'd be like, who the fuck is this fucking guy? Right? And, kill him uh, for different reasons. And then they would try to kill me, and obviously I would kill them first. That's of course, of course. I want everyone to know that Marvin really is actually a black belt. Black belt, buddy. Purple. Because <laughs> he wears one with khakis, man. Donnie. It's kind of bruises, I leave. WednesdayComics.com is the website. If you go to our Twitter page at Twitter, at Twitter, I do that every week. At Wednesday Comics or on Facebook.com slash Wednesday Comics Podcast. Go right now. We are selling merchandise. We have a Wednesday Comics store. You can get a nice sweater. You can get a nice t-shirt. You can get a nice mug, nice uh, laptop bag, a sticker if you want to with a new logo on it. Uh, me, Alex, and Garrett uh, doing the Lethal Weapon kind of homage with Wednesday Comics on top. Uh a lot of people enjoyed the logo. It was something people were asking for T-shirts for like at least like what the whole time we've been doing the show. 
La, first time we went to Supercon, people were like, don't you guys have any t-shirts? I want to buy your t-shirt. Well, we did have a t-shirt at the time, but it was a limited run. Now we found we partner with somebody, T uh, Public. Is that what their name is? Yep, tpublic.com. Tpublic.com. You, so, you also can go there and search for Wednesday Comics. It'll pop up. Tpublic.com. We've teamed with them. They're taking care of the t-shirts, taking care of the shipping. It makes it more viable for us to get it out to you, and you can get it out to you uh, in multiple forms. Like I said, get a mug. Get my face on that mug. Get Garrett's face on that mug. There's pillows. Get Pillows, Posters. sleep on her face. I hope you do. There's phone cases too. But uh, it's something that people ask for, so it's out there for you. And who knows, in the future, we might get a shirt. You think we get a shirt with your face on it that says, holy shit, balls? Uh, <laughs> if you can put a little good tiny top No, I'm going to get a picture so with your face. homage to Michael Buble. I'm going to say, it's going to say, holy shit, balls, Garrett Walls, and then say, dash, Michael Buble. <laughs> That's what it's going to say. Wow. Uh, Wednesday Comics uh, on Twitter, at Alex Mastralo, at Karat2188, at Marvin underscore Saguero. Uh, like I said, again, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Wednesday Comics Podcast. Leave us a thumbs up. You like the page. Tell your friends about us. And uh, you can also let them know to subscribe to the show. Stitcher Radio, uh, Spotify, Apple uh, Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. 605-215-1849. Lose the voicemail. We want to hear what you think. Let us know what you think about the Henry Cavill. Who should play Henry, uh, Superman? Let me know. Leave a voicemail. We want to discuss it next week. Who do you think should play him? A lot of good people. Tom Welling. Duh. Uh, Superman and Batman. Give me the... Uh, the old uh, world's finest. Uh, leave your voicemail. You think you should play them? Uh, go to YouTube. You can see uh, of the gauntlets. Uh, any other content? We hope there are video and also the show. If you listen to this through YouTube, obviously uh, you're on there right now. Make sure you subscribe so you can get it every time way it comes out right away. There we got a book club. Wednesday Comics League of Extraordinary Gentle People proudly presents Sandman Volume One: Preludes and Nocturnes by Neil Gaiman. Uh, we're running out of time here, folks, so make sure you read that book. Coming up here, what, three weeks? Yep. Three weeks October 4th. to read it. Uh, make sure you read that volume one. We'll talk about it. Uh, also, coming up soon, about how many days, Alex? Uh, 15. 15 days left. Supercon 2018, Return of the Con. Well, 15 from this. Up. Go from Sunday. How many days? Uh, Return of the uh, Con. 12. September 28th, 29th, and 30th. you got 12 days left. Go to supercon.com. Buy your tickets. As you heard in the beginning, Ned, I recommend the full weekend, but Wednesday Comics on the 28th at 8 p.m. We'll be doing a live show. Guests will be there. We'll be having a lot of shenanigans, a lot of uh, games. Uh, who knows? Uh, s- some old uh, things of the show might show up again. They might have been found. Uh, I was like uh, Liam Neeson and Taken, and I found them. What are you talking about? You'll see. No. Um, no. Uh, but show up there if you want to get in for the day. I it's ten dollars. Skills. If you want to get in for the weekend, which we do recommend, thirty dollars. Yeah, Supercon.com is where you buy your tickets. Make sure you get them quick before it if sells you don't, out. I will find you. Uh, and and you can join you. us <laughs> eight p.m. that Friday for some Wednesday comics. Uh, Tom Foolery. Fun. Tom Foolery. Uh, my some name is Randall Savagey. Jeez. Roots of the Swamp Thing.com, your definitive source of all things Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing's blowing up, baby. We got Snyder Capullo book. Um, we got a TV Crystal show. Crystal Reed's going to be Abby Arcane, everybody. Yeah, we got a TV show Ooh. coming out on the DC app that uh, Garrett was talking about. We have him showing up in Justice League Dark. He showed up in Scooby Doo book, like Scooby Doo Team Up. This guy's all over the place. Do you know yeah. why people love the Avatar of the Green? Because every day is Earth Day at Roots of the Swamp Thing.com. Go there, find out about the history, find out about what's happening today, find out everything in between, find out, well, you know, one time, uh, find out the origin of a sleeping bag, find out the origin of some slippers. The man is all over, and if you, if you go to his uh, Instagram, I believe it's where I saw it, or maybe Twitter, uh, DC World Swampy on Twitter, uh, you can find Roots of Swamp Thing on Instagram, and then Facebook.com slash Roots of Swamp Thing. Uh, he's showing pictures of the museum that he's building, uh, putting together a lot of stuff, like good stuff, it looks like. Um Question for you, yes. uh, and I, I know only one man can answer this question for me. Uh, can Roundup take out the Swamp Thing? Fine. No. The Avatar of the Green? Dude. Saying it right now. Dude, Swamp Thing is the Chuck Norris of the Green. <clears throat> I, I, believe, I mean, I believe he's the so Chuck Norris. If you spray Swamp right. Thing he's... with Roundup, then Roundup becomes Swamp Thing. <laughs> <laughs> <I thought so. laughs> is that right, Karen? Sure. Slow-mo? Oh, the slow-mo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know I know that. I hate that shit. Uh, a nuclear bomb could be dropped on Earth and Swamp Thing survives. He's like cockroaches and Swamp Thing. Wow. Well. <laughs> uh, best friends. Uh, that's the show, boys. Good show there. We did a little Secret Origins, a little reviews. They got a little heat in that Fantastic Four uh, talk. Uh, obviously. Uh, it was like dropping a big load. If you know, <laughs> if you know what I mean. uh, We talked about Henry Cavill. He's out, baby, out. Um, you know how I think you should play Superman? 
hear me out before you say something. Hear me out all the way, all the way to the end. (laughs) Hear me out to the end. Chuck Norris. Just so we can get slow while right? right. You know the weird thing is that there'd be a lot of kicks going on in that movie. Can you imagine they they make that movie just like an episode of uh, Walker Texas Ranger? Oh my god, I would die. I even want the song to happen. I wanted yeah, to punch somebody ranger. and it goes yeah. into slow mo. <laughs> <laughs> no, then, no. When the person gets hit, then it goes really fast. You know that show. Whoa, oh, you know that show. Always land through a table or yeah. Fall you through know that a show. He had cheesy one liners too, so he'd be like, "Hey." That was a super punch, right? Okay, no one's cheesy lines are as bad as Horatio Cain's from uh, CSI Miami. Looks like the sun got her. And you're like, what the shit? I never watched that show. Oh, don't. It's horrible. Uh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe Horatio Cain can play him. What's he doing these days? Well, I think he's like 80 years old. He probably so. made tons of money off of that Miami. I think it was actually was the number one show for a long, long I th- time. I think more importantly, he made more money off of getting replacement sunglasses because he was always doing the, that lady drowned. And guess she's swimming with the fishes. <laughs> Put this glasses on. <laughs> you dumb. What the crap? You know what? That's actually more interesting than what they would do in that show. That actually is more okay. He would be like, she'd be like dead in the water. And he'd be like, look like this case is all wet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I say that I hate it, but I actually secretly liked it just because it did go right into the theme song. But oh, anyway, for once again, I want to stress out. I want to stress Stress out. out. I want to stress Wednesday comics will be at Supercon, and that whole weekend is gonna be. We're gonna be there mingling the whole weekend. Uh, Garrett will be missing at at one point because he's gonna go find. Uh, who to replace Superman with. He's going to go talk to Henry Cavill, make sure he's okay. I'm going to vouch for myself, and then the instant I know I'm not getting it, I'll find someone that deserves that. No, no, no. You can't put yourself in that role. You're Jimmy Olsen. You don't know be Jimmy? Dude. They killed Jimmy. Shot him right in the yeah, fucking head. That's why we need you to be him. He's, he's dead. dead. He can't come back. Hey, Zed's dead. Baby. It's not a comic book movie. Uh, you actually, and this is 100% honest, and I know he's going to think that I'm fucking making fun of him, but I'm not. You would be a great Jimmy Olsen. You have Dude, the look. I I actually take. I would love to be Jimmy Olsen. And Alex Superman. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> For one sake. To be I fair, I even felt insulted by that. Yeah, I've been Marvin. I've been Alex. I'm Garrett. Hey everyone, keep turning those pages.